نحمد و نسلی علی رسول الكریم اما بعد تعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم رب یسر ولا تعسر و تمن بالخیر اللہ مبارک لنا فی علمنا و عملنا و اوقاتنا Today inshallah we are going to do ruku number 2 verses 102 to 109 so such short verses and we will see what were the tactics of the people the the bani israel at that time and what is something that we need to avoid today so we start with dua that allah show us right as right even if no one is doing it and allah protect us and Help us see wrong as wrong, even if everyone is doing it. So let's say together, if you want to unmute yourself, you can do that. We can say together. Allahumma arinal haqqa haqqa wa rizukna tiba'ahu. Arinal batila batila wa rizukna jtinabahu. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. And the more we give gratitude to what we learn, the more Allah SWT increases us, it for us. So with a very grateful heart, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from any tricks of shaitan. And we begin with Bismillah to attract Barakah. Now in Surah Al-Ali Imran, we have been seeing a couple of things. We had seen the introduction to the dialogue with the people of the scriptures. When Rasulullah was in Medina, what was happening with the Jews and the Christians at that time, what was happening that was there. And what was the purpose of the heavenly books uh, which is given for us uh, it was guidance and trial these were explained in detail and in these first group of ayahs we saw the story of Mary and Jesus and how the reality of the worldly life and Islam is the religion to be followed so we saw that in the first chunk. now the second portion of Surah Al-Ali Imran is something that is common between us and them between the people of the book and we saw that Ibrahim was what was the title of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Can anybody write it or say it? What was the title of Ibrahim alayhi salam? All the nations knew Ibrahim alayhi salam, right? Kalamullah or Kalimullah was Hadiyah was Musa alayhi salam. So yes, that is correct. Alhamdulillah. Is this Amina is typing or is this Ramana? So that is Khalilullah. Excellent. So he was a friend of Allah. But what is one quality that Ibrahim alayhi salam has that we all need? And I just kind of mentioned it right now earlier on. So what is that one quality that we had seen in Ibrahim alayhi salam? And then... Okay, knowledge since he was young. Good job, Daniel, for trying. Focus, excellent. He was Hanif. He was very focused in just pleasing one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter what was happening. So a word that is, uh, so, and then we saw the parties of the people of the scriptures and then the covenant of the prophets, what was given. Now in this chunk, we're going to continue to see the fabrication of the children of Israel and then who are the best nation and what makes them best. When What are the works? Then in uh, next week, we are going to see what is something that me and you are going to do to regain that best uh, status that we had. So the first ayah starts with, the, for today, the 102. Ya amanu. All right. How many of you think that this is a call from me and you go ahead and type one that, yes, this is a direct dialing call from me and you. Uh, why, Dania, why is this call for you? Um, because it's calling all believers. It is calling all the believers. So Allahumma zayyanna bi zinatil iman. May Allah SWT make us strong believers. So whenever we hear, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, we become attentive and we are like, oh, this is called for me. Ittaqullah. What is that word? It means fear Allah. Taqwa is both fearing Allah much and loving Allah SWT much. And how? Haqqa tuqatihi. As he should be feared. All right. And uh, the the truth is that we can never fear Allah SWT like, like that. Like he is like, we, like there is no way we can do that. It's like it's humanly impossible. But Allah SWT is reminding us that fear as much as he should be feared. And wala tamutanna illa wa antum muslimun. And do not die except as Muslims in submission to him. That is the criteria which is given. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to internalize uh, what was happening uh, in the earlier verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was telling us that we were seeing the tricks of, uh, you know, the, the Ben Israel and the, the people of the book. And what were they doing? They were saying, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was reminding that if you follow a group of them, then they are going to turn you away from their book. And how do you disbelieve and you recite the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And last we stopped at, 
that if whoever billahi, whoever is going to hold the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then faqad hudiya ila mustaqim, then he will surely be guided towards the right path. Okay, so now here it's like, you know, two types of things. Number one, individually. All right, so you can write your own name. So what is what I do, I have to do as an individual. This ayah you can write as a title, as a success package. Okay, so for myself, I need to have Allah's fear or taqwa. Okay, taqwa for myself and fatwa for others. Uh, do fear Allah the most. Whenever you have, you are, we are all making decisions all, all the time, every minute and second. Even right now, you're making decision to be here. So as much as you can fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fear him. All right. And the second thing, which is for collectively, is to hold on to Quran and Sunnah. That is the second package which is coming. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here, وَأَتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعٌ وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Wa'atasimu wa'asama is holding tight. All right, you have your pen, pencils in your hand right now. So you're just holding it tight. And hubble is like the rope. And Ibn Abbas, and who uh, he uh, he tells us that this is basically the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the Quran, and uh, which is like, you know, coming down from the sky for all of us. So what do we have to do? We have to hold it all of us together. Uh, today, there are many, many, um, you know, names and things that we come up with. There are different, uh, you know, imams. People say, oh, do you fo follow imam? Maliki or Imam Shafi or so and so on, and this name and that name. And, but what is Allah SWT is telling us is holding firmly to the rope of Allah SWT. So this is a dream that inshallah when you read the Quran, you be able to directly go to the words of Allah SWT and be able to know the meaning. So the next word is wala tafarraqu. So farraqaf Farak means to differentiate or divide. So part of the success package, if you written down, number one, that I need to fear Allah the way he should be feared. And number two is I need to hold to the Quran and Sunnah collectively. All right. So if you if you're trying to follow, um, you know, uh, it, it's just like, you know, instead of following here and there, you hold directly to the source. And what is the source? The source is the Quran and Sunnah. So first, as step one, you understand this Quran and you um, uh, you you understand it. What is its message? What is the message which is given to him? Right. And then uh, we start uh, follow. So how um, how can we ensure like, you know, um, uh, so how, what, you know, so basically uh, Quran is the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how do I make sure that I have hold it, I am holding it to it tight? Hmm? Anybody has any idea? How do I hold it tightly? How, what does it mean that I need to hold it? Um, by like having, like um, by having the good manners and character Mm -hmm. And like, uh, um, and fulfilling your your um your your covenant and the five pillars of Islam. Very good, excellent, mashallah. So, and then Daniel, you're right also, the doing the righteous deeds, right? So that is also like holding on to Allah SWT. So the first thing, like many of the Muslims today, they hold the Quran, they they hold it, they, they hug it, and they, you know, they kiss it and they keep it on their top shelves. But, you know, when it comes to knowing it, we don't know what is even it's saying, right? So it's really, really important that we know the five rights of Quran. What are what are the five rights? So we not only have to believe in it, but we understand it. So we know what it is. So it's not like, you know, um, oh, you know what? It's my exams coming. So my Quran is going to go away. Uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, I, I need to go somewhere or it's just a weekend. So now, you know, I'm going to snooze through my salah. No, this is like holding tight. So every day you hold it tight because this, Dunya is, is the place where we need to uh, put in our effort and then the Akhira is where we will re reap the rewards. And then because when you will do the divide, then what will happen if we put all these strands of these ropes separately out? Is it going to hold some weight? Yes or no? What do you think is going to happen? No. 
No, and it's going to become weak, right? So yeah. that's where Allah SWT is telling us that, you know, if we start disliking each other or if we, if we create division, then it will lead to other issues. So the only and only thing that you call to is Quran and Sunnah. And that's what's something more important. And may Allah SWT help us. And how do we make sure uh, that, you know, we die? Like, you know, previously previously the verse was, Wala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. So we die in submission right and uh, that's where there's a lot of responsibility on the scholars and everybody who is working in this phase that they do not make this rope unaccessible for people all right not do like you know uh, make it so difficult that people are not able to even hold on to it so not making life difficult through this quran but make it easy for people to hold on to this rope of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds in verse number 103 it continues that was the guru so zakara, zikr is like reminder, right? When even right now, while you're listening, you can engage your tongues with zikr. So was guru ni'matallahi, the blessings, the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alaykum upon you. Is kuntum, when you were ada, were enemies, fa'allafa bayna khulubikum, then he brought your hearts together. Remember, the hearts are in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And only he is the one who brings the hearts to, together. And we can, even if we spend the, the world's money, like everything in there, we cannot bring two people's heart together. It only and only comes from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And um, uh, the and then what happened? And you became by his favor, brothers, Right. So Arabs were very disunited. So before Islam, they were not connected to each other. There were fights, there were disputes, there, there was like Arab nation was bordered with Persian and Roman empires, and they never bothered to fight the Arabs as you know they had nothing at that time, no fertile land, no wealth, there was nothing much there. So Allah, when, when the Islam came, Allah SWT put love in the hearts for each other, and people came together, and then Allah SWT blessed them. And now, you know, then when they became like a strong force, then the Romans and Persians wanted to fight them as they started seeing them as a threat. Threat. So that's, it's just like a lot of favors that, you know, we see here how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us of the favors and here as an action item, what do you think? What favors have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given us right now? Can anybody think of some favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us? You can go ahead and type that, you know, alhamdulillah, Mm -hmm. Um, he gave us a family and um, he made us Muslim and he gave us food and water and a lot of other things. He, he made us healthy. And Alhamdulillah. So today we feel connected, bonded to over like billion people around the world. Why? Because we just believe in the same Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this brotherhood that we have today also is a huge favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us that it is his favor that you become brothers and going back to how we need to then hold on tight to this is, is really important. And this is a self-check kind of like how then I need make sure like if Allah has blessed me with all these favors, Allah have made us brothers and sisters, then how do I make sure that I hold tight to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the number one thing, friends, right as a checklist is make sure that you have a strong connection to the creator. No more Allah Mia. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has 99 beautiful names. Allah has attributes. So if you want to be a happy person, a person who uh, is, uh, you know, uh, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, you know, who is happy with the pleasure and the ni'mah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, then you have to recognize the one who is giving us all those ni'mah. Even right now in these pandemic days, we are able to sit together and uh, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a huge name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And uh, so check, uh, you know, what is and how do you check your connection to the creator? How are you going to do that is when trouble arises, when something bad happens. That's when you are going to see you're checking, you know, like it's like a tester. Uh, something bad happens. You're, uh, you know, uh, something broke down. Uh, you failed a test or somebody was really mean and bad with you. Now it's a test that how strong is my connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Am I doing what am I doing to please people or am I doing whatever I'm please doing to please Allah? 
last part of that. So the second thing is that make sure then you understand his message, just like you are doing it right now. That's going to help you hold firmly to it, because then when you will open up your Quran, inshallah, it will talk to you. It will give you guidelines for day to day affairs and then extra add extra nawafil or askar. How many of you do morning or evening as car? Go ahead and type one that inshallah. Yes, this is something I need to strengthen myself. Inshallah, today we will do a dua as well in which we will uh, lear start learning these as car in details. Alhamdulillah. And very important, like always make dua. Even right now, sitting here, ask Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give me the deep understanding of these verses. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help me that I be able to, um, uh, you know, uh, con stay connected and be able to love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And another thing that is going to help you know your strength of your connection, the hablillah, how much is wa'atasimu there, is going to be your spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What happens when it comes to spending? It could be your time. It could be your money. It could be your talent. It could be even... Uh, right now like you know you're, you're spending your time here that's also in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so how do I feel in that now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى شَفَى حُفْرَةٍ مِّنَ النَّارِ and you were on the edge of a pit of the fire فَأَنْكَذَكُمْ مِنْهَا and he saved you from it all right. So when we reflect in our life, it's really incredible. Sometimes, you know, we were, we, sometimes, you know, uh, anytime you feel like um, saying that, oh, why did this happen to me? Just realize where were we and where from where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala got us to the point where we are. And kazalika yubayyinullahu lakum ayatihi la'allakum tahtadun. Thus does Allah make clear to you his verses that you may be guided and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to do deep diving into the verses and see um, how amazingly yubayyinu, yubayyinu is like bayan, bayyin, something which is very clear, just like the sun, it's like very clear and uh, why do we need to know all this so we become like scholars or people who can boast around, no, la'allakum tahtadun so that you may be guided. So let's raise our hands right now and consciously, consciously ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sirat al mustaqim Allah help us have guidance through these verses and not make us of those who are, um, who will be lost after reading these verses, right? And uh, whenever you see the word anar in, in the Quran, what should we do? Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from that. Allahumma ajirna min anar. Because definitely, um, it, it is, and it is very difficult. People can't see that, you know, like Allah, it's a mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the realization that we see that, oh, we are standing by the pit of fire. Some of these things look so glamorous. They are so amazing. And we don't even realize and slowly and gradually even that feeling goes away that we are at a certain place. So it's a mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this. And Allah subhanahu wa says, وَلَّكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ And let there be arising from you a nation inviting to all that is good. Alright? So when you look at this word, مِنْكُمْ What should we do? Hmm? How many of us would like to write our own beautiful names here? And ask Allah. Allah give me the tawfiq. This min or whosoever, Allah make me of that. Yes, Tanya, take action. Right. So go ahead. How many of us would like to be that nation? Because this nation is doing uh, some task. So right. Excellent. And how about the rest of us? Let's write number one, two and three. Then if we want to be these, good job, Alia. So if you want to do these things, that number one is Yadaruna Ilal Khair. So ask yourself, am I somebody who does that? You know, like there are many people that da'wa, da'wa da is the same root word as well. So what does this these people do? They invite to khayr, all right? Invite to that, that is good. And ya'muruna bil maruf, they enjoin, which is good. These two are relatively easy. People will like when you invite them to khair. You tell them that, oh, you know, why don't you do good things? MashaAllah, you know, we are having this class. Why don't you come and you attend and you enjoy? This is fairly easy. But this one is something very difficult. And what is that? Stopping from the evil. 
forbidding what is wrong, that's when, you know, the egos start waking up and that's where life becomes, you know, difficult. That's where you will need a lot of patience, subhanAllah, to go through. But this is the complete package Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, both of them. Yes, you invite to khair, you enjoin what is right and forbidding what is wrong. Does anybody can think of a surah that puts this together, like a small surah that reminds us of these two tasks in 30th juz? Um, sure, sure. Excellent, mashallah. Zadakillahu al ma wa imana wa nafabika falqi ahadia. So, yes, walas in al insana la bihus illa la dina amanu wa amilu sali hati wa tawasa bil haki wa tawasa bil sabr. So, those who remind each other of truth, and then you know, when they have to go through these trials, they remind each other of sabr. And what is what is that they get? at the end, right? What is the get? These are the ones who are muflihun, falah, a success after which there is no decline whatsoever, no decline. So how many of us would like that success? Hmm? Would like that, that yes, I want to be the one who gets this uh, success. So will it just be, um, yes, and uh, and, and would, would we like to be the ones who want that? Then, you know, what we have to do, we have to do the action because it's not just going to have, it's uh, just not going to happen with the wishful thinking. We have to put roll up our sleeves and do our work, inshallah, right? And uh, then what are my tasks? Go ahead. I hope you have this checklist ready. If anybody is able to write, uh, what is your actual action item? Something that you do. Uh, on Yamuruna Bil Maruf or Yanhauna Nil Munkar, then you can type it. Like for me as a mother, I have to make sure that I wake up my kids at Fajr time and raise them. So you can think of something at your time and you can identify your self checklist should become ready that, okay, if I want this fala, then I have to do certain of these actions. So what are these actions going to be? And you take it from there. Right. Alhamdulillah. Just like, uh, you know, Sister Naima just typed here, please respond everyone. That's also like inviting to khayr. So everybody is invited to participate. Everybody is invited to do the maruf and everybody is invited to stay away from munkar. If something is distracting you, you just put it away for a little while and you just make sure wherever you are, you give your 100%. If you are in your school doing your homework, you give your 100% attention to it. Right. If you're cooking, you're cleaning, you give 100% attention to it. So uh, stay, um, you know, on that focus. And that's what was Prophet Sallallahu was doing at that time. And Allah SWT tells us, Wala tafarraku Do not be like the ones who became divided and differed. All right. So always try to make it, uh, you know, always try to come to common terms. You know, don't try to move towards and things in which you are like, uh, you know, creating the divide. So these are something you can have a difference of opinion, but uh, don't create a division out of it. And especially that after the clear proofs have come to us, what is the clear proof that has come to us? Good job, Amina. Yes, that's paying attention is also part of it. So what is the clear proof that has come to us as well today? Those like were mm -hmm. the stories of um, the past very good like, and um this here of the prophet and also like the nature um okay. how, like it's made Thanks. and everything all right and alia yes alia you you typed yes very good i think i you i saw your mic also unmuting so you can even say it out you want to say it out Okay, so yes, that's correct. That's the Quran. And uh, Hadi, you are correct too. So these signs are all around us. One in the forms of the verses which were coming down to the Prophet mm -hmm. that we have today as a Quran. And the other is all the signs which are all around us. Even if you touch your eyelashes, your own, you know, uh, surroundings, the leaves coming out. All these are signs. And Allah SWT is saying that those who create this divide and division, they have a very, very painful punishment. And that is, you know, why? Because it creates a lot of trouble. It creates a lot of trouble. So, tafarahu is far off when you somebody is divided, it's opposite of brotherhood. Okay, so no more sibling fights, no more uh, fighting with each other. Try to look for the positive aspects with each other. And this khal, uh, the khwakhtalafu is khwakhtalafu. Lam and fa. 
And uh, who is this referring to? To the Bani Israel, but this is for us Muslims today as well. So we should not work towards creating division amongst ourselves. And um, those who do, uh, they will be punished for that. So we need to be alert of our surroundings and what Allah SWT has blessed us. And we, as Muslims, our attitude should not be uh, a selfish attitude. Once you realize that how small this life is, we should try to always show the best of manners um, always be gentle with others and uh, we cannot be inventing thing in the religion or uh, you know like sometimes people have like 10,000 good deeds for forwarding this email or something like that so we cannot recreate on those things so once you realize life is so short you do ta'awanu a little bit with taqwa if somebody is doing something good try to help them and if somebody is doing something bad then you can uh, you know help them refrain from from that but um, uh, so basically have a relationship with each other and stay away from differences and disputes. How many of us think that inshallah after reading this verse because this verse is you know like it's reminding us what is that? And this is not an easy thing. So inshallah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be united. Right? And um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Help us, the, the dua that we made in the beginning that help us see the right as right and wrong as wrong. And uh, holding on, helping everybody hold on to the, the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not like tugging it away from each other. That's not going to work, right? Alhamdulillah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding as a consequences, yawma. Which day do you think this is? Uh, the day on which some faces will turn white and some faces will turn black. And as for those whose faces turn black, to them, it will be said, did you disbelieve after you believe? Okay, so go ahead and you can highlight in your um, musafs, in your notebooks, that what is something, the action item, right? So, akafartum. So this kufr is something very scary. That's being like ungrateful as well. And after what? After you have like the belief. So you got a nema and then after that, if you are not grateful for that and you end up in disputes or anything, then that's like bada imanikum. So Padukul Azaba Bimakun Tum Takfurun, then taste the punishment for what you used to reject. And one of the big signs of this punishment is that you know it will make you um, you know the uh, the the contentment, the happiness or excitement is lost. Right, and the person suffers in this dunya as well. So, which one do we want to be? Want to be? Hmm? So here, it it the the uh, the when we talk about these colors of the faces, it's more being in the form of like what is going to be more exciting. They will be like glowing with happiness on that day, but there will be some who will be sad that oh, what did I do? What did I do in my life? So, which side do we want to be? Hmm? Um. It's the glowing side. Excellent, mashallah. Excellent. So we remember this taswaddu, which is black, and tabiyadu, abiyad, that's white, right? And um, uh, subhanallah, it's just like you know, you when you are uh, you are going on a, you know, some sometimes you see something and you're so happy, right? And Allah subhanahu wa taala make us of those who are happy seeing, uh, you know, our our end on the day of judgment because that's all. The day worth it. So this yawm is a day which needs preparation and may Allah SWT reward you tremendously for taking time to prepare for that day. Now between these two faces that Allah SWT talk about, uh, the, the ones with whose turn will be turning black, what, are, what is told to them is, is you know, sarcastically, then taste the punishment of what you used to deny. But what is happening with those whose faces will be shining and white, they will be within the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's say, Allahumma ja'alna minhum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those. And hum fiha khalidun, they will be abiding therein eternally. They will be staying in there forever. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us be of those who will, inshallah, who look forward to mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya and they look forward to mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. And uh, ya hayu ya qayyum bi rahmatika nastaghis. Always make dua for yourself. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I, I don't know, right? What can I do? But Allah, you help help us. So mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what we should ask for every second of the day. Anybody can say the dua, how to ask for mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Hmm? Yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Um, is it like Allahumma, um, um, like Allahumma? It's like, Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum. There are many ways you can ask, but Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum, Bi Rahmati Kan Astaghis. Ali, you want to say? Yeah. Um, yeah. Hayyu Ya Qayyum. Alhamdulillah. Excellent, mashallah. So, yes, I think your voice is coming or not, Alia? So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make us of those, inshallah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in one sworn 108 in Surah Al Ali Imran, Tilka ayatullah. These are the verses of Allah. Natluha alayka bil haq. Who is Alayka here? The Rasulullah Sallallahu So we are reciting them to you with truth. And through him, it's given to all of us. Why is such a bad, bad, you know, punishment for these people who denied or differed on the day of judgment? It's not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to wrong them. Allah does not want to just do injustice on the mankind. He is not wanting to do that, but it's just that the people wrong themselves. They are the ones who they wrong themselves. So, you know, like the first crime even happened and regarding this rule, which is when you do something wrong. The first dua that was taught to us was in uh, to the to Adam alayhi salam. And uh, whenever you see this word zulm or zalimin, always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah Rabbana Golamna and Fusana wa in lam tawfilana wa tarhamna nanakuna namil kasirin. Allah if you do not you know, uh, Allah, we wronged ourselves and if you do not forgive us and have mercy upon us, we'll surely free from the losers. So it's really, really important to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy in this world and Allah will keep us of those who will have mercy on the hereafter. So quick check so far, what has Allah commanded us to do for which the, those whose faces will be shining? Number one, fear Allah as his right to be feared. Okay, so I need to ask, do I have regard of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Am I even being mindful? Just like take a 10 second pause and check your surrounding right now. You know, we are all going live on camera right now. Even if our cameras are on or not, you know, this time, this space, everything is recorded. Who came on time? Who is just, you know, sitting there and just, you know, just, it's just a background thing going on who is actually interacting with the words who is actually making some big ambitions of their life who is realizing you know that oh this is my life i'm not going to die except as muslims right the first i one and two illa wantu muslimun. so get that checklist ready take that look around am i doing fearing allah or is it happening the other way around now second thing do not procrastinate obey now and wa'tasimu bi hablillah, holding on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if I'm not doing either of these things, then I'm going towards zulm, right? Because that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do and not be divided and remember the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we had that checklist, that call to goodness so far if i just you know we have that here so we call to the goodness we enjoin which is good and we stopped from bad so many a times people stop doing that oh somebody's gonna feel bad so i'm not gonna do that so that's also going to be zone that you were present something was happening and then you didn't care to educate or uh, help people uh, learn the right thing Right. So so may Allah SWT help us realize that we can have differences, but we should not be opposing each other. OK. And uh, just think about it. You know, sometimes at this age, if you have like a little pimple or a blemish or something on your face, how concerned do we feel? We want to we spend so much time cleaning it up. These are like multi-million industries working on your um, your facial cleaning things and equipment. But on that day, the faces will be so dark. So may Allah SWT protect us that we end up showing up on that day of judgment with that kind of a um, uh, result. May Allah SWT protect us. So the final thing, the final verse for today is وَلِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Go ahead and type. Yes, Alia, you can say it. I always wait for you, but I don't hear you. Go ahead, Alia. See, your voice is not coming through. Maybe some mic setting or something. We are not able to hear you. 
Okay, so maybe check the mic setting and uh, go ahead and rest of us, can we type what is there which is in the skies, in the heavens? What is one thing that comes to your mind? Uh, because Allah says to Allah belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth. And wa ilallahi turja'ul umur. And to Allah will all matters be returned. People can make different you know, uh, solutions after different uh, things, they can be making different, you know, decisions based on certain things. But Allah is the one who will finally decide what the matter was and what is the judgment on it. That will be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you guys can hear me, let me see what is one thing which, which comes in between, which is in the heavens and in the earth and in between. Very good, mashallah, Hadiya, the universe, everything, including building houses, cars, Everything is there. And how about me, myself? So go ahead and tie it right in your notes that I am also in the heavens and the earth and I am also belonging to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that internalization is what we need to have. That inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajun. I belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will return. Uh, yes, very good. The trees, the leaves, the deserts, the oceans, everything belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the many people of the scriptures, they rejected God's revelations and they wanted to hinder the believers. So I need to check my own attitude towards that and allow, enable us that we do not die except as believers, right? So it's really important to understand that. And believers should stick together and advocate righteousness. And those who separate and dispute over clear proofs will be punished. So may Allah protect us from creating a division or a divide. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable all of us people should learn the deen and help others, you know, connect uh, to the creator. And on judgment day, people will whiten faces, will have God's mercy and people with black faces will be punished for disbelieving after having believed and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just and he owns everything so inshallah we'll move to self-check questions uh, with um, uh, with um, sister Romana inshallah أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام جزاك الله خيرا جزاك الله خيرا سيدة جبريل for your beautiful tafsir today I want to nine and can you hear me clearly yes الحمد لله okay الحمد لله الحمد لله Okay, so um, we have a self-check uh, here, questions. Um, first, let me ask like how everybody is feeling after um, hearing those ayah, ayah one, uh, 102 to 109, we covered. Um, anybody has anything to say about it now? Um, that like, we need to always be um, conscious of like what we are doing here and how um, how it will um, how it will, will affect us and um in the hereafter. Subhanallah. Yes, yes. Uh, we have to be conscious all the time what we are doing with. Our with everybody when we are with everybody when we are alone, we have to check always. We have to make sure that we realize that um, Allah is always watching us, and every matter, every second, everything is counted. There's no such point when things are not counted in our deeds records. So uh, here are some self-check questions. Um, if uh, you can also annotate it um, from your side. Um, I will read the question right now. So um, let's go over that. That uh, am I always conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every second of the day? Yes, maybe, no. Do we do it? You can type it or say it. And, and then uh, for me that um, I would say that, uh, do I always stay conscious like um, with everyone's even, um, you know, dealing with family, 
everybody. Do I fear a lot? Do we check? It? It's not that uh, people won't make mistake, but they have to also realize or come back. So, you know, it's not that it, it's not possible that, you know, we can say, no, we are always conscious. We don't make mistake. Um, it's not that we have the consciousness is comes from us that, uh, yes, we are human also. Um, we have all those um, emotional um, that comes with us, a lot built in, in our, within, within us. So um, the moment we realize we make mistake, we say, sorry, we come back and that's how we fix ourselves, inshallah. So, yes. And yeah, Hadia said, yes, I'm trying. No one is perfect, alhamdulillah, yes. And Alia said, we should be among the people whose face will be glowing, yes, I mean, yes, inshallah. And then the second one here, it says, uh, do we do things to cause division among others? Anything like um, fighting or any kind of thing that maybe uh, we can, you know, what do you think about this one? That is it right to have, uh, you know, like, do we cause anyone's, um, do we cause or do we be the reason of someone's fighting or um, can we be the reason that um, um, to, um, how to say that word that, I'm um, uh, just out of that word that um, consoling or, uh, you know, um, that part. Um, okay. And uh, do I call everyone for goodness? Like, um, if I have to say about myself that do I call my, as a mom, do I call my um, kids for prayer? Just like the Suchavaria mentioned, yes. And uh, the same thing. And uh, if like my kids are fighting, uh, do I try, do I be uh, with one side or the other? Or do I um, tell them like, you know, like, do I? Yes. Okay. And um, yes, Hadia said no. Sometimes it happens that I uh, say sorry afterward. Alhamdulillah, yes. And Alia said yes, yes. Because uh, what I was just saying that when, um, if the kids are fighting and, you know, like you, you tell them the reason and, um, you know, give them the scenario. If the surgery can help me on this, I'm just stuck for some reason. Alhamdulillah, no, that is that is beautiful. I'm reading the comments and finally, Alhamdulillah, uh, I, I'm in that with you. I just like, kept calling Alia, so uh, that was good to see your comment there that we should be among the people who faces would be glowing. So that is beautiful, Alhamdulillah. So Jazakallah yeah. um, uh, for those comments. Anybody wants to unmute and say something? Any question? Respond. And Hadiya, may Allah bless you for your uh, honesty there that it sometimes happens we are all humans right and we say sorry afterwards so that is like the best thing Allah loves those sinners who are willing to accept and uh, come back to him so that is so beautiful and precious that Allah help us not be arrogant at any times mm -hmm. and if we ourselves end up doing something bad then we be aware that Allah is merciful and we be able to go and you know say sorry mm -hmm. to Allah and sorry to anybody who may be we may have harmed knowingly or unknowingly and at, at the same time, you know, as a as a parent, as a mom, if we do mistake too, and there's no harm to say sorry. The moment you realize, you say sorry. Right. And that's how you correct yourself and you move on. Yes. Right. And then uh, the faces will be white on the Day of Judgment. Another way is to have wudu, like those uh, places where the wudu touched very nicely is going to be glowing on the Day of Judgment, right? So we can... Uh, make mindful wudu, inshallah. Uh, so that helps us. Inshallah, inshallah. And and the um, okay. I think there was a one last question. Sushvaria was there. That do I strive to be among those? Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's done. 
face will be yes white. So, so sister uh, Romana, you want to give us a prompt that we can go and discuss in the breakout rooms uh, with this? Okay. So um, there's uh, and now uh, um, after this uh, question, we can do the tilawa. Um, if Hadia wants to recite the tilawa, then we can do the tilawa. And after tilawa, we can go for uh, pairing time and uh, yakin uh, challenge questions for breakout room, inshallah. Okay. Um, can I please uh, share your my screen? Yes, inshallah. Okay, thank you. Can you, can you see my screen? Okay. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatihi wala tamun wala tamutunna illa wa antum Muslimun Wadasimu bihabli lahi jamiyam wala tafarraku wadguru niyamata lahi alaykum idkuntum ada idkuntum ada fa alafa baina kulubikum fa alafa baina kulubikum fa asbahtum biniyamatihi Beautiful recitation. Um, one thing that 